Hi guys, welcome back to Charlotte's Foliage. I just wanted to get in here today and just talk to you a little bit about some things that you can do quickly to save your plant if it looks like your plant's in trouble. Um, and so we'll just go through a few items and I'll show you some examples um, if I'm able to of what that would look like. Okay, so first let me just welcome you back to my channel. If you're new, welcome, and I'm glad you're here. And I hope you love plant content and that you can leave a comment and share uh, some of your ideas if you have experience with plants. So again, thanks, and let's get right into the video. So I have a cheat sheet here that I've been using um, to see about um, you know, just different things that can happen in case you uh, make a mistake with your plant or you don't even know why the plant is not doing well, okay? I feel like I'm too far away from you, so what I'm going to do is try to move in closer. Give me just a second. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. My head might be a little chopped off, but you guys don't need to see my head, do you? Okay, let's see. All right. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I thought about was what if you overwater your plant? And what, if anything, you, you could do right away to save your plant? So, um... One thing I thought about that you could do is a fan. Um, I have a big ceiling fan here in my living room, um, but I also keep a fan near my plants. And I'll show you an example of that. You can purchase some from your local Walmart. They have some that um, you can hang inside your greenhouse or whatnot. So let's just, uh, let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So, in my greenhouse here, I have a little small fan. And, you know, it comes with a cord and everything. I think I paid less than $12 for this at a local Walmart. It even has a little clamp thing here where you can clamp them onto the shelf or whatever. Uh, so, that's one thing you can use to dry out your plant. Let me show you another um, fan that I have. This one here. Okay, it has a little clamp on it, and I keep it clamped onto this shelf, and I turn it on, and I let my fans get air anyway, because, excuse me, my plants get air anyway, because plants like airflow. Okay, so that's one thing that you could do. If you've overwatered your plant and you need that plant to dry out, okay? Another thing you can do is, if you're worried about root rot, you can actually take your plant out of soil, out of LECA, out of whatever container it's in, you can actually take that plant and lift it up out the soil and then place it uh, on a shelf or on your table somewhere safe that no one's going to bother it and just let the roots dry out okay and if you have trouble with soil getting too wet you after it dries out you can turn around and just rinse the roots off and just put it in water you can grow plants in water get you a nice little vase or a nice little glass cup or container or plastic container and just put water in it but make sure you change the water out okay um, add more water to it. Sometimes you can weekly, uh, bi-weekly or monthly, you can add a little fertilizer to your water. You don't want to over fertilize it, but you do want to make sure that that plant is kept in water or LECA or whatever medium you prefer to use. So, um, we talked about the fan. We talked about removing it from the soil and putting it in some other substrate if you want, like water or LECA. And then uh, another thing you can do, if you see some dead leaves on your plant, 
and some that are still alive, you can cut away those dead leaves and then place that plant back into that substrate uh, or that soil, water, wherever it was, and then maybe give it some fertilizer. It just depends on what's going on with the plant. If it's yellowing and it's dry, it may need to be watered. If it's yellowing and it's um, wet, but yet it's not, doesn't seem to be growing, it might need a fertilizer. Um, it may need a, something simple as moving it from one area of light if the light is too high, you might need to move, move it to an area where the lighting is not too high, maybe medium or low light. So those are some things that you can do to save your plant, to keep it from declining anymore. Um, water schedule. If you have a plant that you uh, feel like is not growing, not developing, is, is staying drier, you might have to water it more often instead of watering it every two weeks, water it weekly. Um, when this, the hot temperature is more hotter outside and the sun is coming through your windows, that plant may dry out faster. So you might need to uh, uh, up increase your watering schedule or vice versa. If your plant is being watered and you know that you've watered it and it doesn't seem to be doing any better or growing, you might need to cut back on your watering. So those are just some things that you can do. Uh, some plants prefer that you let them dry out between waterings. And so uh, you don't want to go in there and water it too soon. And then the, uh, the opposite is maybe you're not watering it enough. So those are just things you have to think about. You look at the condition of the plant, where it is now, and then decide what you're going to do differently. Because I know for me, when people would tell me, or I would hear on TV, well, it, it, it could be the plant is yellow, yellowing, and it could be underwater and overwater. I'm just like, well, how do I know which one it is? You touch the soil. If your soil is real, real dry at that moment, and you know that it's been dry, then maybe you are underwatering that plant. If the soil is wet and the plant is still yellowing, Okay, so you might need to let that plant dry out. Maybe you're watering it too much water. Uh, maybe that the plant is holding water and not coming out the bottom of the pot. Always make sure that when you water your plant, water comes out the bottom of that pot and you dump any excess trays or underneath that plant because that will cause your plant to decline too. It's, it's like you're giving it a shower and then taking that shower away and letting it dry so you can give it a shower again. That's kind of the best way I can get you to understand what plants like, okay? Uh, now you do have some plants that don't require as much watering. Um, most plants with thicker leaves, they don't require as much watering. Most plants with real, real dark green foliage don't require as much light. The darker the foliage or the darker the leaf is on the plant, the less light it needs. I didn't say no light, but less light, okay? So um, take, for example, this plant here, okay? This plant is very light, okay? So this plant needs more light because it's a lighter color. The foliage is lighter, so it needs more light, okay? So let me see another plant that's lighter. For example, this plant here, this is a Florida ghost. And this, um, excuse me, this is called a silver sword. This plant lead, needs a little bit more light. This plant looks just like this plant over here. Okay, but you notice this plant is darker. It needs less light, okay? So those are just some ideas just to get you to understand what I mean when I say less light um, for darker foliage, okay? Uh, let's see what else can we talk about. Some things we can do right away. Sorry, I'm moving the camera again. I, my apologies. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see me. 
I'm moving around quite a bit. Uh, some other things that you can do, if you don't have any fertilizer and you say, well, I got all these plants and I didn't even know I was supposed to uh, fertilize these plants. So what you can do is there's some things that you have around your house that you could use to fertilize your plant. One being um, eggshells. If you have some eggshells and you boil the water, uh, or you say you boil some eggs and the water that you use, you can actually use that water to water your plants. Now you don't want it hot, but you do, once it gets room temperature, you can actually fertilize your plants with eggshell water. Uh, another thing you can use um, is coffee grounds or just the eggshells themselves crumbled up. Um, trying to think of some other stuff. I know orchids like a little bit of lemon juice. I'm trying to think what are some natural things that you could do with your plant. Um, so while I'm thinking about that, let's talk about pests. If you have, you notice pests on your plants or you notice your leaves are real, real dirty, you can use, um, a antibacterial soap and actually wash your plant leaves down and rinse them off with your little uh hose or you know your little uh sprayer on your sink um you can clean your plant up that way you can actually give your plant a shower which helps some pests uh for example uh spider mites you can give the plant a shower and it'll remove the actual bugs off of the foliage. And then you can treat it with some type of, um, you can treat it with the soap. You can treat it with um, a fungicide uh, like neem oil. These are just immediate things that you can do to help that plant that's declining. Uh, another thing, let's talk about root rot. If your plant is uh, most of the foliage is dying, but you see one or two good leaves still on there. You can cut away all the dark part that's rotting and then uh, get rid of it. And then you can put some um, cinnamon, uh, just reg your regular household cinnamon uh, on that plant where you've cut it or where it's rotted at and uh, to cut down on pests. Um, you can use peroxide, you can use alcohol. Uh, another thing, if your plant is not getting enough light, and I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, is make sure your uh, plants are wiped down with a sponge um, if you can. Make sure your windows uh, or doors or wherever the light comes in at, that it's clean. You know, you might need to take some Windex and clean your windows because Plants need that light from outside to come in in order to photosynthesize and continue to grow and develop. Um, I'm trying to think of some other quick things you can do. Placement. Um, if a plant has been sitting in one part of your home and it doesn't seem to be thriving, move it to another area. If you already know what kind of lighting conditions that it needs, then um, just move it to a, a, an area that has those same lighting conditions, but it might prefer uh, the east window instead of the south facing window. So those are just some things that you can do and then watch that plant uh, um, change for you. Um, after a while, you may not believe this, but you'll start getting used to your own plants and what your plants need you start knowing when you need to water them. You'll look at them. Like some plants, let me show you an example. This plant here, this is a skindapsis, okay? This plant lets me know when it needs to be watered because the leaves begin to curl, kind of like this. And they also actually look smaller. You can see one right here is curled up there. It lets me know it's almost time for this plant to be watered, okay? So there are some things that plants do and they'll let you know. Some plants get a little low. They get a little flatter when they need to be watered. They become limp. Another thing you can tell uh, when your plants are uh, needing water, their actual container that they're in is much lighter. 
it when it's watered, then it has is heavier. So that's the way that you can tell when your plant is in need of a, a, some water and some care. Okay. Um, if you've done everything, the watering, um, and you check for root rot and you've checked for lighting and you've checked for uh spots on the leaves and and you still don't seem to be having any success with that plant you can actually lift the plant out of the pot and take a look at the roots see if the roots are white or light colored if they're dark that means you have root rot um and sometimes you can still save the plant, but you want to get it out of that condition that it's in. And if you need to repot it and put it in a more barky uh, soil mix, sometimes plants are in too compact of soil and they're just getting wet and they're not, the water, the plant is not having enough time to dry out. So um, on most of my videos, I talk about the soil uh, mixture that I use. Uh, I use um, perlite or pumice and I use charcoal. I use orchid bark and I use organic soil and I just make sure that the majority of my plants have this mixture because they like it and I'll show you that mixture right quick. Just a moment. Okay, I have it right here. If I was to pot up a plant right now, this would be the mixture that I use. It's just a barky mix. And everything that I just named is in here. And I try to do this with all my plants. Now, if there's a plant that likes to stay on the wet side, you can use some cocoa core or some um, sphagnum moss because those plants like to stay a little bit on the wet side. You could still use this barky mix, but you might have to water it more often than you would the plant that likes to dry out between waters. And say, well, Charlotte, I'm interested in buying a plant, but I don't know which one that I need to buy. I'm, I tend to be a, a over water. So you might start out with a plant that's uh, likes water. Um, so I'll give you an example of that. Alocasias, and I'll show you some of my alocasias. Alocasias like light and they don't like to be dr dry out. So I'll show you. I have several alocasias. I have one right here on the table. This is an alocasia. Can it dry out? Yes, but it doesn't like to dry out. Uh, once you give it water, it'll prop back up. Let me show you another alocasia I have. I just got this one here and I love it. This is my new plant. It's an alocasia. This is a dragon scale alocasia. See how beautiful and dark the leaves is? She's a beauty. I love her. Let me see. I got some more alocasias. Uh, let me see. I think I got them outside. I, I actually, I actually planted a bunch of alocasias together. So here's another plant that loves to be a little bit on the wet side. This is uh, uh, Maranta lucanera. I believe that's how you pronounce it. But your prayer plants, um, your calatheas. And your marantas, they tend to like to be a little on the wet side and they love humidity, okay? So let me show you another prayer plant that I have. This is another prayer plant. I keep forgetting the name of this plant, but... Um, this is a, a, a Maranta also. And um, it loves to be a little bit on the wet side, okay? And she's, I bought this plant really small and this plant really is growing. And, uh, but that's on your prayer plant side. They like to stay watered. So if you're a waterer, get you a prayer plant 
they're not always easy. They have some that's easy, some calatheas, marantas. They can be on the easy side and sometimes they can be on the difficult side. But since you're going in knowing that these plants like a little water, they don't like to dry out. That's a plus because for me, I didn't know that I would let them dry out and then I would lose them. So I've killed a couple of marandas for that reason. <clears throat> You're going to have some people tell you that plants like to dry out between waterings, but some of that depends on where you live because I'm going to tell you one plant that I lost and I ended up changing the water schedule, which was no longer letting it dry out as I was instructed to do. And that plant is thriving. And I'm going to show you. It's, uh, it's called String of Hearts. String of, they've got String of Pearls, String of Hearts, String of Turtles. They've got all these String of everything. And their needs are different. But the String of Hearts, I really love this plant when I first seen it. So I said, I have got to get the hang of how to take care of this plant. And that was it. I wasn't watering it enough. So now I've learned how to water it and I have two. I'll show you. Okay. All right. That's one right there where my finger is. That's a string of hearts. I'll move this out the way so you can see. See, this is a string of hearts. I water that plant more often. And I have another one right here. This is a string of hearts. And see how long it's grown? They're real delicate plants, but yet they don't like to dry out between waterings. It's, waterings. it's been my experience that they prefer to be watered more. This is another plant that I was told let it dry out between waterings. I've been watering this plant more, and I've, it's been pushing out more growth. This is a ficus teneki and it's been growing more. These are water lovers too. These Chinese money plants, they don't like to dry out between waterings, but I was told that they do. So I think a lot of it just depends on where you live and where your plants are located. Okay, so I hope that I've been helpful in kind of giving you an idea of things that you can do to save your plant um, from just totally de being destroyed. If you have a situation where your plant dies, it happens. I've had several plants die. And then if, if it was too difficult for me and I did it again, then I just said, this is not the plant for me or my condition. So I'm not buying that plant anymore. Um, but if you're determined to learn a plant and don't have a problem with losing the plant and don't mind repurchasing it, then go for it. By all means, go for it. So let's just remember that, you know, there are things that you can do to save your plant. And lastly, one thing that is really important that you can do as soon as you think of it, after your plant is home and getting used to its new environment, take a cutting. If that plant has more than one leaf on it or more than one node on it, cut it, put it in some water and still take care of the plant, that the original plant. And that way, if you lose the original plant, you still got your cutting. So thanks again for watching. I hope I've been helpful. I hope that if you know ways that I haven't already mentioned that you will leave it in the comments. Bye.